In a review for the 2013 novel Bleeding Edge, the writer Joshua Cohen declares that cell phones have become the chief antagonists of fiction. This antagonism is the subject of a free online course I am offering, which looks back over the literature of the 2010s and examines how writers have grappled with hyperconnectivity, the state of network communication in which we live, which combines constant flowing of person-to-person, person-to-machine, and machine-to-machine communication. How exactly are cell phones antagonists of fiction? Let's look at the premise and ending of Seinfeld before connecting this back out to the wider literary concerns of the course. In a typical episode of the sitcom Seinfeld, Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer will move about the city independently, or perhaps they'll go off and ride different parts of the subway. As they move along, they have different encounters, dates, business dealings, good experiences, terrible experiences, an interweaving set of narratives which come to a climax when characters travel through time and space to come together, in Jerry's apartment, in the diner, at a movie theater, and it is discovered that a person one character encountered is the same person another character saw somewhere else, or new information will be given that completely upsets the expected flow of some sort of relationship or scheme. This structure does not work when all the characters are in constant remote communication, when their social networks are visible online, when they are microblogging their lives to each other, when these strangers they meet are searchable, their secrets immediately laid bare by the trove of online knowledge, collecting the outputs of countless personal and machinic communications. Fittingly, in the finale, Elaine gets a cell phone and uses this on the street to try to contact her friend who is in a serious, tragic family situation. Jerry berates her. The cell phone walk and talk is the lowest form of communication. In contrast to sitting down together in the home or at a diner to talk, the passive mobile cell phone call is an act of impersonal disregard. It is talking in extra, otherwise unproductive time, offering that in place of any time which is of true value to the caller. Of course, today we are beyond seeing the cell phone walk and talk as an offense. For many, in fact, this approach to communication is too aggressive. Just text. The quick and easy text message allows communication anytime, anywhere. That information can just as easily be passing through to one person as millions, and just as easily you do not need to be transmitting just text, but photos, videos, locational data, and so on. At the same time as this one line of communication is going out, potentially thousands more are coming in through various channels. Meanwhile, machines are communicating with each other in millions of little ways which oversee all of this and can govern parts of your future. What good is a contemporary set novel which ignores all of this and instead just gives you something which could be any random Seinfeld episode? And why is it that an author would ignore all of this new stuff, so just happens not just with contemporary set novels, but within the large trend of literary fiction today toward historical fiction? In The Reader and Technology, back in 2012, Toby Litt wrote the continually insightful prediction that what we're going to see more and more of is the pseudo-contemporary novel, in which characters are, for some reason, cut off from one another, technologically cut off. Already, many contemporary novels avoid the truly contemporary, which is hyperconnectivity. How did Litt know that this would continue to happen? despite how high the adoption rate had already become by 2012 for computers, the internet, and even smart devices. As he explains, traditional narrative frameworks depend upon a gap in communication. Litt gives the example of Homer's Odyssey, which could not exist if Odysseus could simply text Penelope at home. The story is premised on the immense gap in space and the considerable time and effort needed to go back, as day after day Penelope's ability to stall her many suitors gradually runs thin, Odysseus, meanwhile, unable to contact her to explain what's going on. In terms of characters being technologically cut off, I like to teach the example of the horror movie trope where phone lines, a relatively long-standing technology, are cut either literally or by storm or chance. The characters are then stuck in a nightmare world with some sort of killer or monster, unable to call for help. In a more modern example, this would be the dreaded No Signal, a horror in itself as our entire hyperconnected world is suddenly ripped from us. Yet if we are so immersed in this hyperconnected world that momentarily losing that web of connections is so shocking to us, why is it difficult to write about those experiences? 
These aren't occasional boring moments that can be disregarded in a wider story. The reality is that small moments of connectivity permeate our days. Our whole or partial inability to narrate this life reflects a deeper failure in perception and in giving meaning to how we choose to approach life and relationships. Literature is a means of exploring what is at the heart of our experiences and our perception. And so over the next 10 weeks, I will be exploring concrete literary examples of this literary dilemma and some approaches worth studying. Though cell phones may be an antagonist of fiction, they have not killed fiction. As I hope to impart of these 10 weeks, this is a challenge producing many wonderful opportunities, and the best is yet to come. I've included a link in the description to sign up for free. There is a full 18-page version of the syllabus, which gives a basic overview and the reading list I will be drawing from. And then each Friday, you will get an email giving a concise overview of the week's topic. Similar to this video, these will take just 5 to 10 minutes of your time each week, designed to give you insights into contemporary literature, accumulating into a solid working knowledge of the intersection of literature and hyperconnectivity. I've also so far had two included authors express interest in participating in a Zoom session with participants in the course. This is all still free, part of a project in trying to engage a wider public audience with cutting-edge literary knowledge. If you found this video interesting and worth your time, you're going to want in. And if you know anyone else who might be interested in this topic, send them this video or the link in the description where you can sign up. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the